Ah, isa pong magandang umaga sa inyong lahat. Ah, regular attenders, no, mga bagong bisita at yung mga bumalik na bisita. <laughs> Salamat po ang ating announcement. Si Pastor Rolly po nasa Molino na nangangaral ngayong umaga at mamaya po si Deacon Mario sa hapon, sa Molino rin. So ayan lamang po ang ating uh, announcement. Psalms 111. Okay. So, Psalms 111. Sa pasimula ng Psalms 111, napakagandang salita. Ano? Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with all my heart in the company of the upright and in the assembly. Great are the works of the Lord. They are studied by all who delight in them. Splendid and, maj and majestic in His work and His righteousness endures forever. He has made His wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. He has given, given food to those who fear Him. He will remember His covenant forever. He has made known to His people the power of His works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of His hands are truth and justice. All His precepts are sure. They are upheld forever and ever. They are performed in truth and uprightness. He has sent redemption to His people. He has ordained His covenant forever. Holy and awesome is His name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all those who do His commandments. His praise endures forever. Napakaganda, no? Talagang dapat malwalhati natin ang Panginoon. Wal walang reason, eh, na hindi natin bigyan ng papuri ang Diyos. Dahil sa kanyang katakilaan at kapangyarihan. Kaya, hindi po sayang ang pagpunta natin dito. No, no, tayo nandito para purihin ang Panginoon. At sabi nga rito, napakasaya at napakasarap na yung mga tao na nagtipon-tipon dyan sa verse 1, in the company of the upright and the assembly, I will give thanks to the Lord. Ayun. Kanya niya nang gawin natin. Magkakasama tayo rito, isa lang ang dapat purihin, kundi ang Panginoong Jesus. So, umawit po tayo sa hymn number 216. Hymn number 216.
tayo po'y manalangin. <clears throat> Opo, Panginoon, pinupuri ka po namin sa aming kalagitnaan. Sa inyong mga tao rito na nagtipon, isa lang ang aming puso na yan ay purihin ang inyong pangalan. At kung ano man ang mga gumugulo sa aming mga isipan, Lord, tanggalin mo po ito at hayaan ninyo na makasama namin kayo na magbigay kami ng buong pasasalamat sa patuloy na ginagawa nyo sa aming mga buhay. Sino nga po ba kami na para bigyang ng pansin sa mga oras na ito? Kayo'y dakila, makapangyarihan at nakaupo sa inyong trono. Nagahari, magpakailan man. Eh nandito kami nagtipon na gusto rin namin purihin ang inyong pangalan. Sana po wag niyo kaming i-reject sa oras na ito. Bagkos ang dalangin namin ay bumaba kayo at samahan niyo kami sa masayang pagdiriwang na ito ng pagbigay papuri sa inyong pangalan. Sa bawat aspeto na aming gagawin, sana makita roon ang puso at pag-iisip namin na naka-engage sa mga ginagawa namin para sa inyong kalwalatian. Samahan niyo po kami. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Tayo po ay mo po. At magpatuloy po tayong umawit sa hymn number 5. Hymn number 5.
Sige po, dumako tayo sa scripture reading. At babasahin po natin, o babasahin ko po ang uh, aklat ni Titus sa chapter 1. Titus chapter 1. So Titus chapter 1. Paul, a bond servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ for the faith of those chosen of God and the knowledge of the truth which is according to the God to godliness in the hope of eternal life which God, who cannot lie, promised long years or uh, long ages ago but at the proper time manifested even his word in the proclamation with which I was entrusted according to the commandment of God our Savior. To Titus, my true child in a common faith, grace and peace from God, the Father, and Christ Jesus, our Savior. For this reason, I left you in Crete, that you would set in order what remains and appoint elders in every city, city as I directed you. Namely, if any man is above reproach, the husband of one wife, having children who believe, not accused of dissipation or rebellion, for the overseer must be above reproach as God's steward not self-willed, not quick-tempered, not addicted to wine, not pugnacious, not fond of sordid gain, but hospitable, loving what is good, sensible, just, devout, self-controlled, holding fast the faithful word which is in accordance with the teaching so that he will be able to uh, both to exhort in sound doctrine and to refute those who contradict. For there are many rebellious men, empty talkers, and deceivers, especially of the circumcision, who must be silenced because they are upsetting the whole families, teaching things that teaching things they should not teach for the sake of sorbid gain. One of themselves, a prophet of their own, said Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, lazy glottons. This testimony is true. For this reason, reprove them severely so that they may be sound in the faith, not paying attention to Jewish myth and commandments of men who turn away from the truth. To the pure, all things are pure, but to those who are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure, but both their mind and their conscience are defiled. They profess to know God, but their deeds, they deny Him, being detestable and disobedient and worthless for any good deeds. So makikita natin ano yung uh, paalala kay Og. Sinabi ng ni Paul para kay Timothy na ayusin yung iglesia. Ani ah, ni Titus sa iglesia at uh, para maging maayos ang kanilang uh, uh, buhay uh, iglesia. At dito makikita natin pinakita kung ano yung uh, qualification ng isang matanda o elder o leader sa iglesia, ano? At uh, mapapansin nyo, nakalagay rito. Alam po ninyo, napakahalaga talaga na pangunahan ng isang iglesia ng maayos na pinuno. Ano? Para sa ganun, ay walang, uh, hindi siya mabahira ng kaanumang uh, masamang uh, pangalan sa iglesia ng yun. At uh, panalangin natin na uh, kaming mga elders dito sa inyong iglesia ay uh, talagang maging above reproach sa mata ng tao sa, sa mata rin ninyo. At may mga iglesia rin na kailangan din nating ipanalangin na ma-preserve din sila dahil yung kanila mga matatanda ay eh, mga tao rin naman, hindi mga perfecto na kailangan maayos din ang uh, kanilang pamamalakad. At napakalaking bahagi ng uh, ginagampanan din ng isang matanda dahil nakalagay dyan, for there are many rebellious men, sa verse 10, mga empty talkers and deceivers na dapat itama rin at uh, i-correct sa kanilang kamalian. Eh, brethren, ganun din ang uh, purpose din namin, no? Na makita ang mga bagay na ito para maitama. At sa ganun, eh, uh, makita ang kanilang uh, kulay sa harapan ng tao at sa Panginoon. So, para sa application natin, sabi ko nga, ipanalangin natin ang mga matanda, no? Na no, pag-ingatan ng, mga pangin- ng Panginoon sa kanilang buhay kristyano at uh, sa pag-aayos din ng iglesia natin.
So ipagpanalangin natin ang bagay nito at panalangin din natin ang uh, bansang uh, Madagascar no sa South Africa, isang ma- uh, mahirap na bansa. So isang malaking island ito at uh, ang uh, kanilang buhay roon ay uh, talagang nasa mababang uh, kalagayan. No, one dollars every day lang ang uh, yung uh, dapat nila ikabuhay roon eh no 100 ano 1 dollars that's 50 pesos per day so mabigat bagaman na uh, nagpo-profess silang Christian o Christian country eh marami pa rin na uh, dapat ipanalangin sa kanila na maraming sumasamba sa iba't iba pang mga Diyos-Diyosan at mga uh, ethnic uh, religion no sa kanilang kalagitnaan so pagpray natin ng Madagascar at iba pang mga concern ng iglesia. <clears throat> Sige. Panginoon, nagpapasalamat kami sa inyong uh, kabutihan na nagtalaga kayo ng mga matatanda sa inyong uh, iglesia. Salamat po na marami sa bagay na ito na kung saan ay uh, itong mga matandang, matatandang ito, mga elders na ito, mga bishop at uh, overseer, ay uh, hindi rin ito mga banal na banal na tao, perfect na mga tao, kundi may hina rin ang kanilang uh, kalagayan. At uh, mga tao na, na minsan ay nadata pa at uh, nagkakamali, Pero sa iyong biyaya, Panginoon, nagtalaga ka ng mga pinuno para pangunahan ang inyong iglesia. Kaya patuloy namin ipinapanalangin ang matanda sa aming mga kalagitnaan. Uh, pinapanalangin namin na i-preserve nyo po ang apat naming mga elders na ilayo nyo sila sa kamalian, ilayo nyo sila sa uh, maling uh, buhay sa mundong ito at ilayo nyo sila, Lord, sa mga bagay na maaaring makahiwalay sa pag-ibig sa inyo. Dalangin po namin ang apat na ito ay gamitin yung mas lalo para sa ika lalago pa ng inyong iglesia. At nawa ay pagpalain ninyo ang mga ministry ng uh, kanilang ginagawa. At dalangin din namin na sana po ay uh, palakasin nyo pa ang apat na matatanda sa aming kalagitnaan. Ilayo nyo rin sa uh, mga karamdaman at kahinaan ng mga katawan uh, habang lumalakas sa pananampalataya. Eh sana palakasin nyo rin ang aming mga katawan. sa pakikibaka namin sa mundong ito. Pinaalala rin namin ang mga ibang iglesia na iilan lang ang mga matatanda sa kanilang kalagitnaan. Eh sana po mag kayo ng mga iba pang mga elders sa kanilang mga kasamahan para sa ganun pangunahan ng inyong iglesia. At sa pagtawag ninyo ng mga kasamahan nila bilang uh, matatanda, sana po gamitin nila ang uh, ibanggit dito kay Titus yung criteria o yung mga dapat na makita sa kanilang mga buhay. na mga karakteristik, mga gibiyaya na makikita sa kanilang mga buhay. Hindi lamang uh, gift, kundi yung uh, uh, karakter na nabanggit dito. Kaya kinukumit namin, Lord, na mag ka ng mga kalalakihan sa kanilang mga iglesia para sa ganoon may mga kasama ang aming mga uh, kasamahang iglesia na iisa lang ang mga pastor. Lord, katulad nila, Pastor Maramara, Pastor Boy, sa Iligan, uh, si Pastor Noel, At iba pang mga pastor na iisa lang ang, ang uh, nangunguna rito. Lord, maawa ka sana. Eh, ito isang dakilang gawain para sa inyong kaharian. At uh, sinabi mo rin na manalangin kami at humingi kami ng uh, katuwang nila sa gawain. Kaya po ito yung ginagawa namin na sana i-grant po ninyo sa tamang panahon. At natutuwa kami na mismo doon sa loob ng iglesia, ikaw ay magtatayo ng isang lalaki o maraming lalaki para pangunahan ng inyong iglesia. At kinukumit din namin, Panginoon, ang ministry sa Tagum, sa Bacolod, sa Bukidnon, sa Jensen, na kung saan itong uh, mga, ba, mga lugar na ito ay uh, sinisimulan ang gawain para sa inyong kaharian, eh sana po maging matibay ang mga nangunguna rito. Huwag niyong pabayaan na manghina sila. Hindi, patuloy na lalakad sa inyong katuwiran. Patuloy na lalakad sa inyong mga salita at pangangaral ito ng may kalakasan sa kanilang Uh, congregation o sa kanilang fellowship. Gusto rin namin makita ang uh, kasigasigan ng kanilang uh, mga gawain doon na uh, pagpalain ninyo, mga Bible study, uh, ang mga contact nila, ang uh, mga pakikipagtungo uh, nila sa mga tao. Eh, sana pag paramihin pa ninyo ang mga gawain doon, Panginoon. Kaya uh, itong uh, darating na katapusan ng October, may DBBS na gaganapin doon sa Jensen. Gamitin ninyo ito na isang uh, pamamaraan para 
humamo o tumawag ng mga tao sa kanilang paligid. Kahit na mga bata ang tuturuan, pero yung mga magulang na nandoon, sana magkaroon ng direct contact sa kanila. At para sa ganun, ay ma-invite sila dito sa Jensen, umaten at uh, magkaroon pa ng Bible study at maging uh, malawak ang saklaw ng Ebanghelyo sa pamamagitan ng DBB, DBBS na ito. At kinukumit na rin namin sa panguna ni Pastor Mike na sana po ingatan niyo sila sa pagpunta roon at nawa, maging kaaya-aya ang gawain doon ng mga ilang araw. At tutulungan niyo rin na maging safe sila at ilayo niyo sila sa anumang sakuna na maaaring mangyari sa kanila. At dal- dalhin mo rin silang pabalik sa aming kalagitnaan at makasama namin at maka-fellowship muli. Lord, nilalapit din namin ang bansa nga Madagascar, uh, Madagascar sa Africa, isang uh, uh, mababa o, ulub, o ma- poor na country. Uh, kinukumit namin sa inyo, Lord, na sa inyong kaba- kapangyarihan, sa inyong awa, tulungan niyo po na ang nangunguna sa kanila na mag- tulungan na magkaroon ng karunungan para hikayatin ang kanilang uh, mamamayan at tumulong din sa kanila para umanlad ang kanilang pamahalaan. Ilayo mo sila sa anumang uh, mga corruption o kasamaan at patuloy na pagpalain ang mga kapatiran doon na nagpuprofess na totoong mga Kristiyano na sa pamagitan nila ay ma-share ang Ibanghelyo at uh, ang uh, liwanag ng katotohanan ang siyang mangibabaw sa kanilang kalagitnaan. Sana maraming makakilala kay Kristo doon at uh, ang kapayapaan at ang kaligayahan ay mapasa kanila. Katulad nung narinig namin kaninang umaga, walang makakapagbigay ng kapayapaan at totoong kaligayahan kundi si Kristo lamang. Kaya sana i-grant mo ito para sa kanila at patuloy na makita namin na kahit na mahirap na bansa ay punong-puno ng kapayapaan at kaligayahan kay Kristo Jesus. Naalala rin namin si Pastor Rolly sa Mulino Sana po ay pagpalain nyo rin ang kanyang ministry doon. At uh, sa mga oras na ito, baka siya ay nangangaral na, eh, sana samahan nyo po siya. At uh, gamitin mo ang salita na, mag- na maririnig nila para sa kalalakas ng kanilang pananampalataya. At inaalala rin namin si Brother uh, Mario na mangunguna roon sa hapon. Sana samahan nyo rin siya roon at dalhin nyo ang inyong salita sa puso ng mga kapatiran doon sa pamamagitan niya. At kami, sa aming kalagitnaan, samahan nyo rin kami Panginoon Huwag nyo kaming iwanan at nawang banal na spirito ay patuloy na bumaba sa aming kalagitnaan. Hipuin nyo po si Pastor Mike sa pangangaral ng inyong salita na talagang maging appropriate ito sa aming pangangailangan at nawa gamitin mo rin para sa kaligtasan ng mga hindi pa kumikilala sa inyo. Lord, kinukumit namin ang mga bagay nito Tuloy nyo kaming pagpalain sa paglapit namin sa inyo. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Pagkalob na po natin ang ating mga handog sa Panginoon.
Tayo po i-mawit muli sa hymn number 424. 424. Tayo po i-magsitayo. Nitong uh, mga nakaraang siguro months na yung nakaraan ay uh, umugong sa mga balita yung eksena doon sa airport na kung saan isang congressman. Sana wala ditong pinasasakupan noon. But then, isang congressman na nung hinarang siya doon sa security check uh, ay uh, nagpakilala at nag-name drop ng isang uh, mataas na personality sa gobyerno. At uh, ang, punod, ang magiging uh, uh, bottom line is, kumbaga, ito yung hindi nangyayari lang naman. Hindi lang naman nangyayari yan doon eh. But kahit sakali, nangyayari yan. Sa traffic situation, pag may nahuhuli, ako kung may gumagawa pa ngayon, dati, pag binigay yung lisensya, may kasama nga, uh, dati, baka ginagawa niyan, sana hindi, no? Yung lisensya, ng sleeve ng lisensya, tapos meron nakasingit na card, pang doon, general ganito, ganyan. O kaya isang mataas na pangalan ng tao sa gobyerno na para pag tumingin, yung enforcer na huli sa'yo, ay, kilala mo pala to. Sige. O kaya di mo sagutin ng iba na hindi mo ba ako kilala. No? And uh, uh, in return, ay humihingin ng isang favor. Yun lang naman yun. Babanggit ka ng isang pangalan ng tao na kilala mo or yung sinasabi mong kilala mo. And then, uh, ang kapalit ay may favor kang hinahanap. Either mapalusot ka sa... Isang violation or sa inconvenience. Eh, sa ating pag-aaralan ngayon, eh, may similarity itong ganitong klaseng ugali. No? Na masabi man natin, eh, parang ayabang naman itong taong to. Pero makita natin na may mas malaking uh, implication itong mga bagay na ito sa ating pag-aaralan. And we're continuing dito sa ating series, short series lang naman, uh, mini-series dito sa Matthew chapter 7. Ito yung uh, last portion ng uh, preaching ni Jesus doon sa Mount, sa Sermon on the Mount, na ito na yung mga kumbaga, closing remarks ni Jesus sa kanyang preaching. At nung mga nakaraan, na 
nadaanan na natin itong uh, verse uh, magmula verse 13 uh, yung uh, comparison na at yung utos ni Jesus to enter the narrow gate instead of the wide gate dahil ito ay tumutungo sa destruction the narrow gate leads to life at nung nakaraan din ay uh, napag-aralan na rin natin yung warning against false prophets mga bulaang propeta o bulaang mga tagapagturo na kung saan ay eh, madidiscern naman sila malalaman through their fruits sa kanilang mga bunga sa kanilang buhay kung yung kanilang tinuturo ay tama eh tingnan natin yung buhay nila okay at ngayon tunghay naman natin itong verse uh, 20 hanggang uh, 20 3 ng Matthew chapter 7. Sabi rito, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name cast out demons, and in your name perform many miracles? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Analangin muna tayo ng saglit para hilingin ng tulong ng Diyos sa ating pag-aaral. Muli aming Panginoon ay lumalapit kami sa inyong trono ng biyaya. We ask for your grace, for your wisdom, and for your Holy Spirit na sumama sa amin ngayon at magbukas ng mga puso't isipan. Apart from your work, O Lord, uh, we will just rely on our wisdom or even not on our wisdom, at mapapariwara kami. At itong mga salita ng buhay na inaipapangaral dito sa pulpitong ito, this will just go on just like on sa wayside, or it will be just taken and be snatched out by the enemy. Lord, tulungan nyo na ito'y binhi ng buhay, ay maitanim sa puso ng bawat isa. Sana ito'y magbunga, patungo sa kaligtasan. Samahan nyo rin ako, O Diyos, sa pagturo. Ilayon sa kamalian, sa kayabangan, at anumang bagay na maaring makahadlang sa paghatid ng inyong mensahe sa magang ito. Sa ngalan ni Jesus. Amen. So sa ating binasa na text, uh, nais nice ko lang humango ng tatlong uh, points, no? Uh, three main points from uh, the text that we have read. And uh, first point really is yung necessary na clarification. Verse 21, makita natin dyan na merong ginawang clarification si Jesus. And pangalawa, it, there is a bold articulation at uh, kumbaga mapangahas na pagsasalita o pagbibigay ng uh, pagpresent ng kanilang case. At pangatlo, merong sobering na declaration. Okay? So yun yung uh, roadmap natin sa umagang ito sa passages na ating uh, pagbubulay-bulayan. So una tingnan natin itong necessary na clarification na ginawa ni Jesus. And again, Having preached itong characteristic ng uh, mga false teachers no nakaraan, kanilang mga bunga, eh, ito pa rin ay bahagi dun sa preaching ni Jesus na kung saan ito'y characteristic ng kaharian ng Diyos at yung kanya mga citizen. Yan yung laman ng Sermon on the Mount. Kung narinig nyo na at nabasa nyo na, uh, that spans from Matthew chapter 5 hanggang uh, Matthew 7 verse 12. At uh, maraming mga sinabi si Jesus doon, now, these are not qualifications, but really these are descriptions of what it is to be kingdom citizens. Ano ang kaharian ng Diyos at sino, anong katangian ng mga citizen ng kaharian na ito? Yan yung Sermon on the Mount. Kaya nga encouragement niya, kung kayo hindi pa, eh, maging tagasunod kayo ni Jesus. Pumasok kayo dun sa daan, ng, ng, uh, maiksi, uh, makipot na daan, sa daan ng pananampalataya, pasisi, pagsisisit pananampalataya, at uh, kayo ay mabibilang dun sa kaharian ng Diyos. So, yun yung uh, buod or yung summary nito. And now, he deals with, after dealing with yung uh, uh, qualifications, or not necessarily qualifications, o yung mga katangian, eh, he now deals with hypocrisy. Hypocrisy in general. Uh, regardless of their rank or yung status nila, sila man ay mga teachers, preachers, pastors, or even believers. Okay? Uh, ang ranggo nito ay uh, walang pinipili, basta lahat. Kaya ang sinasabi dyan, sa text sabi nasa, not everyone, kaya nga yun simula eh, everyone. Nung sa verse 17 hanggang 20, eh, nakita natin merong specific na sinasabi. Although, ang sinasabi rin dito, 
ay uh, may kinalaman pa rin sa mga false teachers. Ang main agenda pa rin primarily ay ang ina-address false teachers but overall sa general na bagay, hypocrisy in general. And uh, this is the main evil na ini-expose ni Jesus dito sa mga talatang binabasa natin. Now, teachers or yung mga disciples may profess allegiance. Kumbaga sila ay nagpapahayag na sila ay uh, may kinalaman o mayroon silang ugnayan uh, kay Jesus o sa Diyos. Ayun yung ina-address dito. At uh, their adherence to the master sa pamagitan ng kanilang bibig. Kaya nga sabi ko niya sa introduction natin, ay eh, may mga tao na mahilig magbigay ng mga salita na sila ay, kesyo ay uh, may uh, relasyon dito sa taong ito na mataas. Kaya, kumbaga, tingnan nyo ako ng kakaiba dahil ako ay may connection dito sa taong to. Eh, Di ba, minsan, baka sana hindi natin ginagawa. Naghahanap tayo ng padrino minsan. No? Kukuha ka ng lisensya. Eh, wala ba si, ano dyan, si ganito, ganyan? Pero hindi mo naman pala talaga kilala, no? O kaya, pagpapasok ka sa, sa, sa village, sa isang guard, eh, magsisinungaling pa. Nadyan ako kay general ganito. Siyempre, pag narinig ng guard, general. Wala naman talagang general nakatira doon. Eh, natakot lang siguro. Eh, we, you know, we, we laugh and giggle, pero I hope we're not doing that. That's lying. That's sin. And uh, nagumagamit tayo ng pangalan. But in this case, Makikita natin later on na hindi lang yung basta-basta uh, pagbubukas ng bibig, but he, he pro, they profess allegiance or loyalty sa master na kung saan sinasabi nila sa kanilang bibig. Nakita natin that Jesus exposes that not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, by the way, no, may, mayroong pagpinasa nyo even sa Old Testament yung, 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 yung pag-uulit ng ganyan, Lord, Lord. Merong expression, may pahiwatig na ito'y there's an intimacy involved. There's an intimate relationship assumed. Now, when I say Lord, Lord, when God spoke to Samuel, 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 now, may intimacy involved. So pag naitan natin yan, merong uh, assumption, nalo na itong mga taong ito na nagsasabi nito, they assume that there is this relationship. And when they said Lord, Lord, They're assuming also that they'll be given favor. Kaya nga sabi rito ni Jesus, in-expose niya, not everyone who says to me, emphatically, Lord, Lord, uh, will be given access or entrance to the kingdom of God. Or hindi lahat nagsasabi ng Lord, Lord, ay eh, merong karapatan ng pagpasok sa kaharian ng Diyos o sila'y kabilang sa kaharian ng Diyos. And there are those who utter, they honor, they worship, Uh, God with their mouths, but their hearts are really far from Him. Yan yung sinasabi sa Matthew 15. So, a few pages lang po, no? tingnan natin. Matthew 15, verse 7 to 8. Sabi rito ni Jesus in rebuke for uh, Pharisees, you, uh, verse 7, you hypocrites, did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, These people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching doctrines as, uh, teaching us doctrines, the precepts of men. So lip service. Pwede mangyari yun, that you honor God, you worship God with your mere lips. Kaya nga sinasabi rito ni Jesus, Jesus is exposing na, na not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord. Not everyone who says to me that they are reformed. Not everyone who tells to me, says to me that they are Baptist or whatever religion they are. Not everyone who professes that they understand. Kung ano yung sinasabi ng 1689 London Baptist Confession of Faith. Na siyang pinanghawakan ng iglesia ng ito. Not everyone who says to me will or has a true entrance to the kingdom of God. On the other hand, let us be mindful also that it doesn't mean that all who profess with their mouth their allegiance to Christ is not a true disciple. Why? Because one of the marks of true disciples are, is also confession of Christ. Now, hindi ibig sabihin, ah, nagko-confess siya ng tungkol kay Jesus. He's professing Christ to be Savior. Hindi yan totoo. No, because one of the marks of a true disciple 
Mar, uh, Matthew 10, 32 to 33. Sabi rito ni Jesus, this is the same scene then. Uh, uh, perhaps judgment. Everyone therefore who shall confess me before men, I will also confess him before my Father who is in heaven. Hindi kinahihiya na siya ay tunay na manampalataya at tunay na disipulo ni Jesus. Therefore, confession follows. Romans 10, 9 and 10. Perhaps, kabisado ng mga ilan sa atin dito, that if you shall confess with your mouth, and believe, believe in your heart, and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you are my disciples. That's a mark of true discipleship. You are saved. You will be saved. Confession. No? So that's why hindi nila lahat. Pero sinabi ni Jesus, not all. Not everyone ngayon na nagsasabi ng Lord, Lord, na meron silang ugnayan kay Jesus, hindi lahat na nagsasabi, okay, lang ko yung Diyos. Wala kayong pinagkaiba dun sa kali, sa nandaraya, dun sa airport, sa, ka, sa, sa officers, sa gwardya. Ah, kilala ko si ganito. It's easy to profess. Especially when in your in a nation, tulad nito, na open dito ang uh, pag-profess sa Diyos ng Kristyanismo. Quote-unquote. And try to do that sa China, perhaps. Or other very strict nations. You know, the numbers will you know, funnel down, kukonti. Profession pa lang yun, ha? pagsasabi pa lang. Not necessary true religion. But you get the point here. Jesus exposes itong mga bagay na ito. And Jesus clarifies it by contrasting with the word here. Sabi niya dyan, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but but he who does the will of my Father. Mere word profession, or salita lang, or expression na kaning allegiance to Christ, uh, uh, kinontras ni Jesus from really doing God's will. But he who does the will of my Father which is in heaven will enter. Now, the entrance to the kingdom of God are those, uh, those who enter the kingdom of God are those who are marked with a life of perseverance, continuous obedience to God's commands. That's the word that we John. It's a continuous, it's in the present tense, continual obedience sa kalooban ng Diyos. The kingdom is that of a heavenly kingdom. Hindi ito tulad ng uh, dito sa mundo. Therefore, yung nature ng mga utos na ito na ina-expect na sundin ng mga nagsasabing sila ay kaanib sa Diyos, meron silang relasyon sa Diyos, and these are heavenly commandments. Ito'y utos na galing sa Diyos mismo at hindi galing sa tao lang, gawa-gawa ng tao. And we've read kanina yung ginawa ng Pharisees. I-rebuke sila ng Diyos of their hypocrisy. They teach as if it's doctrine na galing sa Diyos, pero yun pala ay gawa-gawa lang ng tao. Mga utos na kung saan wala namang sinabi ang Diyos patungkol doon. Therefore, those whom God admits to His kingdom, kung yung pinapapasok niya sa kanyang karen at presensya, are not merely professors or confessors ng kanyang relationship sa kanya, but those who both confess and obey Him as Lord. Panginoon talaga nila at nakikita sa kanilang mga buhay. Their reality or yung genuineness, pagiging totoo nitong confession na ito, na sila ang aaya, uh, uh, si Kristo ang kanilang Panginoon, si Kristo yung kanilang Lord, eh merong evidence, may ebidensya of a compliant submission to His commands. Pagpapasakop sa kanyang mga kautusan, pagpapasakop sa kanyang Kalooban. Now, you, we must take note, and this is a very important note. This is not an equation. Equation meaning, do this and you will. Hindi equation po. Rather, or it does not, it's not even a means of attaining entrance sa kingdom ng Diyos. Kaya nga, do this and you will enter. Rather, this is a description describing those who will enter. The kingdom of God from those who will not. So Jesus again is delineating. Merong exposition na ginawa si Jesus dito. At gusto niyang mahiwalay, magkaroon ng clarification. 
Eto, hindi lahat na nagsasabi ng Lord, Lord, ay papasok sa kaharian ko. But rather, those who are obeying, who does His command. And these are the marks of true people of God. Kaya sila yung makakapasok. Hindi dahil gumagawa sa rin ito, kaya makakapasok sila. It is an evidence. It's a description of who they are rather than uh, an equation. Ang sabi ni John Calvin, These words, therefore, do not exclude faith, but presupposes, ina-assume, as it is a, the principle from which good works flow. From genuine faith, good works flow. Obedience flow. So hindi lang ito mere external obedience. Pakitang tao. No? Yun yung pinupunta ni Jesus. And yan yung habit at gawi ng mga Pharisees. So it is a necessary, necessary clarification na gawin ni Jesus to mga bagay na ito. Kasi kakapreach niya lang eh. Kakapreach niya lang ng marks of the kingdom. Marks of the kingdom citizen. Now, not only is empty confession being tackled dito ni Jesus. Hindi lang yung empty na confession na Lord, Lord, na wala naman talagang saisay ulaman. But also, again, hypocritical mere external obedience. Kasi maari may magsabi na they claim that uh, hindi lang ako nagsasalita in words, but I also have the works to prove it. I, I have works to show. I'm not just saying Lord, Lord, pero walang works na ikita. But such is what Jesus also addresses dito, especially sa next verse. And our second point really is dito, eh, the bold articulation, a bold articulation. With false teachers, still, nasa crosshairs pa rin, no? kumbaga nasa, nasa site pa rin ng, ng ni Jesus, but also generally addressing everyone, everyone else, not just false teachers. Jesus now gives the scenario uh, na kung saan eh, magtitake place on Judgment Day. Yan yung laman ng verse 22. But this is not merely an illustration or a story or an example. But this will actually happen on that day of judgment. Kaya yung gamit ang salita dyan. Many will say to me, on that day. Again, this is not an illustration. That's what we see dito sa 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 to 8. When Paul said na merong day, that day, usually refers, ginagamit sa New Testament as the day of judgment. Now look at 1 Thessalonians 5, 10. 1 Thessalonians. Quickly, dito sa 1 Thessalonians 5, 10. I mean, 2 Thessalonians. First pala, sorry. Balik-balik again. First, toto na yan. 1 Thessalonians 5, uh, verse 10. Mukhang mali pa yan yata. Pasensya po at uh, kinakabahan pa rin kahit sa lagay na to. Hindi po 2 Thessalonians 5, rather 2 Thessalonians 1, verse 5 to 10. Okay? First Thessalo 2 Thessalonians 1, 5 to 10. This is a plain indication of God's righteous judgment, so that you may be considered worthy of the kingdom of God, for which indeed you are suffering. Kasi in context, Paul is giving encouragement sa mga taga Thessalonica na nagsasuffer ng, just, ng injustice, sa kanilang suffering, sa kanilang persecution. For after all, it is not only just for God to repay with, repay with affliction those who afflict you and to give relief to you who are afflicted and to us as well when the Lord Jesus shall re be revealed from heaven with His mighty angels in flaming fire, dealing out retribution to those who do not know God and to those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And these will pay the penalty of eternal destruction away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power, when He comes to be glorified in His saints on that day, and to be marveled at among all who have believed, for our testimony to you was believed. So, when we see yung word na yan, that day, when Jesus speaks of on that day, it usually refers to judgment. And ito rin yung eksena may kita natin dito sa verse 21. Bakit? E merong judge eh. 
Meron ako upong judge, may presiding judge, none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. Kaya nga, dito sa makikita natin, it's an actual event that will happen. It's gonna be on Judgment Day. Now, the narrative seems to convey sa verse 22 na meron, especially but not limited to false teachers, again, kasi sabi doon, eh, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, but particularly uh, false teachers who will even dare, who will even dare or give their appeal. mag apila Sa huling araw po, walang court of appeals. Dito sa atin, meron. Judgment Day is D-Day. No other courts but the court of Jesus Christ in final judgment. But these people na minention Jesus make their case and appeal. In fact, it seems like a protest pa nga eh. Protesta pa nila. Because perhaps hearing that they are not given entrance sa kaharian ng Diyos, they give a protest. What do they say? Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not? Hindi ba ganito? What's that? That's a protest pa din. O protesta na parang mali yata. Kasi ganito eh. Hindi ba ganito? Hindi ba meron kaming ganyan? Hindi ba meron kaming ganito? They're protesting against the judge of the universe. Not just false teachers, but false converts. By the way, this is the title of the message today. The, re the, the reality in the danger of false conversion. Not just false teachers that was last time, but false conversion. They are emphatic again sa kanilang appeal. Lord, Lord! That they have believed to be in the right. Kami nasa tama sa lagay na ito. Sa pagpasok sa kaharian. As if sinasabi nila na, Lord, kung meron mang dapat deserving na makapasok, makatuntong sa iyong kaharian, kami yun! Kami yun! Ako yun! Kung meron mang karapat dapat. That's their appeal. That's their protest. They have claimed to oh, not just say, Lord, Lord, but they have works to show na deeming word that is deemed worthy para sila ay tanggapin ng Diyos sa kanyang kaharian. You see the audacity in that? And we cringe dito sa airport scene? Ang yabang ng taong to ah. Kala mo kung sinong congressman? Sasabihin pa niya na ganito, kakilala niya ganyan, si ganyan-ganyan? Eh, ano pa kailam namin kung kilala mo yan? So many comments that we hear. What's your comment on this? That these people, and I hope and pray that there will be none of you here in this room today. Visitors, loved ones, regular attenders, and church members alike. They are emphatic. They are convinced that they're supposed to be there. They claim to have worked, not just ordinary works. Great works, in fact, na ginawa nito mga taong to. Eh, not just great works. Ang claim nila, ginawa nila ito alang-alang sa Diyos. That's what they say. In fact, these are what what we see, they say, they will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Di ba kami nangaral ng salita ng Diyos? Di kami nangaral ng salita mo, alang-alang sa pangalan mo? And that makes me tremble even right now. This is addressing to me. To preachers, teachers. Did we not cast out demons in His name? Wala naman ako maisip na nagka-cast out ng demons di Siguro meron. Ano. Pero, these are people, especially nung time na ito, na, 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 na uh, earthly ministry ni Christ, because Christ is, and with His disciples, perform these things. And they claim to have association with Christ, that they are his, their master also. 
and they preach the gospel. They, they cast out demons in His name. They have performed many miracles in His name. These are not just ordinary works, but great works. Great works have the tendency to cause amazement sa mga tao. Kaya ito yung highlight eh. Talagang namangha yung mga tao. Kung yun yung sinasabi nila. Enough to get a following. Kung baka kulang sabihin, Lord, tingnan mo yung mga followers namin. Hindi sa Instagram, ha? Lord, tingnan mo yung followers namin. Tingnan mo yung sumusunod saan. Tingnan mo yung mga disipulo namin. Tingnan mo yung disipulo ni Kibuloy. Tingnan mo yung disipulo ni Suryano. And I will be bold and crass about this because they are false teachers. And so many others sa bansa pa lang natin. And this will be their cry on that day. In your name, we did these things. Claiming that they have done such in the name of God. But let us not forget yung pinag natin previously lang. They may have done such things. But remember, anong characteristic ng false teachers? You know them by their fruits. And we will go in line with that sa ating pagpapatuloy. And remember, what was the fruit? Their fruits were basically bad, evil. Daming ambong ha, pero bulok. False doctrine, false teaching leads to ungodly and false and unbiblical life or lifestyle. Kung palamura yung nagtuturo, makakatiyak ang palamura ang tagasunod. Kung mayabang yung nagtuturo, makakatiyak ang mayayabang din yung tagasunod. Kung deluded yung nagtuturo, makakatiyak ang deluded din ang mga tagasunod na siyang bunga nito. At yung buhay nila will follow such away from God's word and His truth. MCBC, be careful. Who you follow, what you share in your Facebook accounts, in your social media. Now, ang tanong ngayon, are these works valid or true? Yung sinabi nila, prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, work many miracles, perform many miracles in your name. Are these true and valid? The judge neither denied or approved or validated their claims. Hindi sinabi ni Jesus. Ang sinabi lang ni Jesus, ito yung claim nila. Although false teachers, false prophets may and can do certain wonders. Dadami bang tagasunod niyan kung hindi talaga wonderful, quote-unquote, sa mata ng isang tao? Mabibilib sila sa, sa witness kung sumagot. Kung paano pa ikot-ikutin ang kanilang ulo. Ay, matalino to si ganito ganyan. Tingnan mo, hindi umatras sa debate. That's the basis. Eh, ang daming sumusunod dito. Tingnan mo, may mga Russian pa, may mga international kumakanta sa likod niya. International na yan. Isundin natin. They can work wonders. And so does the devil. And so does false teachers, such as Pharaoh's magicians, such as Balaam, such as Simon, this is Brother Simon, Simon Magus. They performed all these wonders, but they were rendered false. It doesn't validate any relationship with God. These false teachers and false converts mentioned sa text na ito, seem to relate their works with their intimacy with God. Lord, tinan mo yung ginawa namin. But again, yung emphasis is not mainly the validity nung kanilang ginagawa, but rather, Jesus exposes their hypocrisy. Another thing to consider is that these people, these who make such claims, such bold assertions before the all-knowing and just judge, Sabi dyan, sa verse 22, the first word should cause alarm because it says many. Many. 
many will say, hindi sila ko konti. These are not just false teachers, but also false converts who profess, confess allegiance to Christ as their master, doing the works of mere external religion and traditions, and even works righteousness para maging merito o basihan ng kanilang kaligtasan at acceptance ng Diyos. And they are many. What's the predominant religion in this world today? And it's a works righteousness religion. It's not a grace alone, faith alone, through Christ alone, to the glory of God alone, salvation. It's a do this and you will. If you fail here, there's a purgatory. There's a safety net. And many are misled and blinded by such. They are many. Lord, Lord, I have kept the tradition. Lord, Lord, I go to church. Not just I went to church, I still go to church. I pray. I give my tithes and offering. I give to the poor. I do good to others, etc. Now, these things are not wrong in and of themselves. Again, this is not the issue at hand, rather the condition of the heart. It is this that Jesus, the judge, na kung kanino tayo tatayo at magbibigay ng ating sulit sa huling araw, He will give a verdict. And He's gonna judge even to the motives of our hearts, not just our deeds. Exposing and dividing true teachers, true converts from false ones. Kaya nga sa Matthew 25, we see the language of the sheep and the goat. There's a distinction, may paghahate. And this is what we see in the next and last point ng verse natin. There will be a sobering declaration. Verse 23. Verse 23. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Ito yung response sa appeal, sa protesta nila, nung judge. Una-una natin makikita yung declaration nito. It's a decisive and clear judgment. Walang paligoy-ligoy. I declare to them, I will declare to them, I never knew you. It's plain and simple. Hindi yung, eh, Baka ano, nagkamali lang ako. Baka na-overlook ko lang. Baka nagkamali ng bigay ng record yung isang anghel ko. By the way, that does, it's not true. Huh? Jesus, as the judge, is the omniscient and omnipotent judge. He doesn't need witnesses. He will judge through and through. All-knowing and all-powerful. Now, he contradicts what the false teachers and false converts claim. Ang kiniklaim nila, meron kaming intimate relationship sa'yo. Lord, Lord! And he does so by giving out a denial of any intimate relationship. I never knew you. I never knew you. Hindi lang ito misinformation or parang hindi alam ng Diyos. Or wala siyang alam sa mga bagay na ito na hindi niya kilala, hindi ka niya kilala. Rather, this statement, the word used here, no, denotes distinct, intimate relationship. I never knew you to begin with. Who are you? You claim to know me, but who are you? Again, that should cause alarm to those who maybe profess the name of Christ. It is indeed a sobering reality that come Judgment Day, it is not just our claim of knowing Him that counts, but His claim of us most of all. And imagine yourself 
nagde-demand ka ng entrance sa Malacanang dahil sinasabi mong kilala mo si Presidente Duterte. Although marami siyang invitation na sige pumasok kayo dito. But the reality is, you don't know him. You know him by by name. By mere knowledge. Ah, ganito yan. Ganito ganyan. I know him. I know the president. Do you think the PSG will say, ah, ganun ba? Sige, pasok. Ilang screening kayang dadaanan mo? Pero most of all, kung tatanong yung taong mataas, honestly, will say, I don't know this guy. But we're not approaching President Duterte on Judgment Day. We're gonna stand before the Almighty Judge, the Judge of the Universe, the Creator of the Universe, your Creator, who is righteous in judge sa kanyang judgment. How much more with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? While we are indeed, you know, to know Him, claim to know Him, yet this knowing of Him also denotes Him knowing us as believers. We are His and He is ours. Jesus knows who are His. Malinaw po sa salita ng Diyos. Kilala ng Diyos kung sino yung sa Kanya. And these people that He knows, that He know, knows Him. There's a true and intimate relationship portrayed sa relationship na ito, just like yung ginawa ni Jesus dito sa John chapter 10 of the shepherd and of the sheep. I'll go to John chapter 10 to refresh us with this. John chapter 10, verse 14 and 27. Then G for John 10, 14. I am the good shepherd, verse 14, and I know my own, and my own know me. So it's not just an empty claim, nakilala ko si Jesus, Lord, Lord, but that Jesus knows me. He knows me. Yan ang importante sa lahat. In verse 27, what do we see? My sheep hear my voice, and I know them. Ito yung marka kung bakit sinasabi ni Jesus, kilala ko yan sila at kilala nila ako. Anong marka? They follow me. But prior to following Him, they hear Him. They love to hear Him. And they love to follow Him. No external, mere external religion lang. Not merely a Sunday believer. Not merely a pulpit believer. Furthermore, Jesus not only disassociates and denies any intimate relationship with them, but also casts them away from His presence. Ano sabi dun sa, balik tayo sa Matthew 7, And then I will declare to them, I never knew you, depart from me. Umalis ka, lumayo ka sa harapan ko. Get away from my presence. This is hard and harsh. What a dilemma for those who will try to appeal their case. Thinking that they deserve entrance sa kaharian ng Diyos by their mere external profession with their mouths and with their deeds, only to be rejected by the judge and king. Napakalaking dilemma. He distinguishes them apart from his own. His own he receives, just like yung sa distinction ng goats at sheep. And what does this rejection, casting away, entail? Sinabi ba rito, okay, you, you, uh, Depart from me. Umalis ka sa aking presensya. I never knew you. Is it just like a walking away? Okay, fine. Dito na lang ako. Or is it a departure to somewhere else na medyo hindi ganun kasaya, pero masaya pa rin? Wala nga lang sa presensya ng Diyos. Rejected nga lang ako dun. To where will they be sent out? Cast out? Outside the door of heaven? 
in a faraway place where there's still enjoyment and good life? Is it to a place where they can comfortably gather and meet others in order to plot an ouster of the judge and king who rejected them? Dito tayo. Pinalayas din kayo doon. Halika, dito tayo. Magsama-sama tayo. Mag-rebelde tayo. Parang may kilala akong ganun. Ha? Sarap ng buhay ngayon sa ibang lugar eh. Habang naghihirap yung mga alipores niya rito, namamatay. And they're plotting against the government. What? Ever government there is. Is it going to be that kind of casting away? No, it's not. Matthew 25 gives us a grim glimpse. Turn to Matthew 25, verse 31 to 33. Verse 31, But when the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the angels with Him, then He will sit on His glorious throne and all the nations will be gathered before Him, and He will separate them from one another. As the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and He, verse 33, will put the sheep on His right and the goats on His left. Again, you see a distinction. Goats, sheep. Left, right. Hindi pwedeng gitna. Walang middle ground. Dito lang ako, Panginoon. No, there's a distinction. And the judge will cut the line straight and clear. And verse 41, go to 41. Then he will also say to those in his left, Depart from me, accursed ones into the eternal fire which has been prepared for the devils in his angels. It's not a better place. It's not a good place. It's not an idle place. It's a place of destruction. Eternal destruction. A parallel scenario na nakita natin of judgment day of casting out it's a casting out into a designated and prepared place for eternal destruction and torment. Yan yung binasa, binasa din natin kanina sa 2 Thessalonians 1 verse 8 to 9. It's a place of destruction. Casting out from His friends. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not? Did we not? And I will say to them, depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. And we will go to that on the last part here. Finally, we are given the reason. That's the reason. Going back to Matthew 7. Bakit ni reject ng Diyos? He reject and deny them entrance and stay to His presence. His rejection of them is related to His holy character. As God cannot stand the presence of sin before Him. God hates sin. When we say God hates sin, don't you ever think when we say God hates sin that we think of hate just like how we hate. Because God is utterly holy and His hatred is holy. He doesn't hate just like we hate. His hate is holy hate against deserving sinners like us. And this is a place where He sends them. He hates them. That's why He rejects them because they're, despite their claim of uprightness, katuwiran sa kanilang works, their very lives, their very conduct is marked by lawlessness. Oo nga, nagpo-profess sila and yet they show this kind of religion but their lives the principles that govern them, they are marked by antinomianism. No law whatsoever. Nabubuhay sila sa araw-araw, sa mga decisions na kahit sa mga maliit, walang kinalaman ang Diyos at kanyang kalooban. They just live their lives, I will make a decision. I'm a Christian, but I make decisions. Walang kinalaman ang Diyos doon. And nakikita sa buhay nila itong mga desisyon, kanilang pamamalad sa kanilang buhay, na wala ang Diyos. And yet they can claim they are Christ's. 
That's a dangerous thing to say. Meaning their life, though they have external works to show, does not really match kung ano yung pinangaral ni Jesus dito pa lang sa Matthew 5. And he expounded to them, true holiness brought about by the gospel is absent from them. Yung tunay na ebanghelyo. Binasa natin kanina sa Titus 1, verse 15. Sa Titus 1 mismo. Let me read that to you. Titus 1, verse 15 to 16. To the pure, all things are pure, but to those who are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure, but both their mind and their conscience are defiled. They profess to know God, but their deeds, they deny Him, being detestable, disobedient, and worthless for any good deed. They profess to know God, but live as practical. Atheists. And a Mark false convert. And many will be on that day, will profess that they are. Yan ang mark ng false teachers. And many are they. They lie, cheat, steal, lust, hate, covet, blaspheme God, while under pretense and guise of doing the Lord's work. They delight and feel safe in it. Ito yung, ito yung marka ng buhay ko, pero okay lang, active naman ako sa church eh. Nagpipreach naman ako sa church eh. Oh, wala mo nakakalam nito. Pero ganito yung buhay ko. Okay lang, masipag ako sa church, sa evangelism and all that. That's exactly what Jesus is pronouncing and exposing here. To pursue holiness and profess love for the Master is not pursuing what is good and right only, but also detesting and departing from ungodliness and sin. Hindi lang yung sinasabi natin, oh, susundin ko ang Diyos, I will obey Him, kung ano yung papagawa niya sa akin. But on the other hand, we drag along sin. We bring our darling sins. 2 Timothy 2, verse 19. Nevertheless, the firm foundation of God stands. Have a seal. The Lord knows those who are His. And everyone who names the name of the Lord is to abstain from wickedness. Brethren, are we abstaining from wickedness? If we in the name of the Lord, are we pursuing holiness even in the sense of abstaining wickedness, wicked thoughts, carnal thoughts? May effort man lang ba? Show me your wounds that we fight and try to kill it. Those who truly know and belong to the Lord whom Christ calls His own are marked with a pursuit of holiness. Not merely in church or in the ministry, but in their daily walk. Maging anak ka man, magulang ka man, studyante ka man, may trabaho ka man, wala, naglilingkod ka man sa gobyerno o hindi. Their daily walk, their principles are captured and overt by the law of God and through seeking opportunity to do what is good while abstaining and hating the very garment of sin that defiles them. Pastor, that's too much. No, it's not too much. It's exactly what God wants us to do. And He grants grace. Sufficient grace. In conclusion, God knows for His those who belong to the king regard and love this law, not merely externally, hindi lang panlabas, but delight to live according to it. Brethren, even friends, visitors, what is your chief delight in your life? To earn, to earn much, to have leisure, to go around the world, to buy things, to enjoy life. 
It's a vain pursuit. Says the richest man who ever lived. Do we delight to live in accordance to God's will? You know, on the other hand, those who do not belong to Him only have mere external works and words to show. Not only that, but uh, I'll repeat, those who do not belong to Him only have mere external works and uh, words to show, but not a life that testifies of God's saving grace that yields forth good fruit. They may profess and do the works. You may profess and do the works. But the grace of God in the gospel, tunay na nananahan dapat, ay wala. Walang bunga. In closing and in application, let us, brethren, humbly examine our own faith. As Paul said, so in 2 Corinthians 13.5, you test yourselves whether ye you be in the faith or not. These are dangerous times. We are in the last days marked by a large-scale and wholesale apostasy near the end. As we delight, church, in the coming of Christ, looking towards that day na babalik si Jesus, makikita natin yung tagapagligtas natin, we should also tremble at the fact that there's gonna be a wholesale and large-scale apostasy in the church. Not outside the church, but in the church. Will CBC be spared? I don't know. I hope not. I hope it will be spared. I hope we will be spared. Let us examine our own faith, putting it under the scrutiny of scriptures that we do not merely live and give an empty profession and external works to warrant our faith and belongingness to the Master. Business to the king work and activity must not be a cloak of ungodly life and lifestyle. Hindi dapat ito maging mantel, yung pagiging busy natin sa gawain, sa evangelism, that this will not be a cloak of licentiousness. If you are, then repent of it and serve God out of pure and delightful heart with holiness in your life. And let us persevere with the grace of God, abundantly supplies his sheep to continue to walk in holiness and in truth, serving Him in sincerity without hypocrisy. And to our friends, you may have received various, numerous times na ikaw ay na-reject. Na-reject ka sa studies mo, sa work, relationships. Reject on hurts. Masakit. Masakit ma-reject. Lalo na sa love life. Promotion mo, na-reject. Pagpasok mo sa isang school, sa isang college, na-reject. Pag-apply mo ng trabaho, reject. What does that feel? Ay, salamat, na-reject ako. No, it hurts. It hurts. Rejection hurts. Indeed. But one rejection you do not want to experience is the rejection of God. To hear God's mouth open in rejection of you in Judgment Day. When He says the same thing, depart from me. I never knew you. Depart to eternal destruction. But most glorious and most beautiful thing in the midst of all this is the same judge who pronounces, depart from me, you that practice lawlessness is the same judge who calls and invites sinners to humbly come to him. Come to all who are weary and heavy laden. I will give you rest for your souls. What a delight and a beauty that is. Now I go and I can be absolved of my own sin and wretchedness and punishment in hell from the same judge who pronounces that I'm guilty. How is this that a compassionate Savior that has given His own life as a sacrifice and substitute for condemned sinners to be accepted by God, not by my own merits, but His merits, the merits of this Christ the righteous. He's the friend of sinners, remember. 
I will cast no one, sabi niya, who comes to me, who comes to me in humble repentance and faith. My friend, young person, professing to be a Christian, but you know deep inside that you're not. Come to Christ. Free from hypocrisy. Come to Him. Humbly submit to Him. Turn from your sins and trust in Jesus and Jesus alone. Let's pray. Lord, salamat na hindi kami uh, pinapabilog ang aming mga isipan. Hindi, kami, hindi nyo kami dinideceive, but you expose to us your truth, just like what we see here. But Lord, as na itong mga kataga at mga salitang ito na salita ninyo, uh, you would use this to everyone here, not just to false teachers, but to everyone. But we would be mindful sa aming mga bibig. Kung kaya nga ay nagpo-profess ng mga mana ng palataya, pero Wala namang katunayan ng gospel grace of love and obedience sa inyo. Kami pa rin ang namumuno sa aming mga buhay. Kami pa rin ang nasusunod sa aming mga layaw. Ay hey Lord, tulungan niyo, Panginoon. Bigyan niyo kami ng pagpapakumbaba at lumapit sa inyo. And you strengthen those who are true believers indeed, not to trust in themselves, but continue to be sustained by your grace. And especially, Lord, aming mga kaibigan, oh may that they see that day coming. And that they would draw near, flee from the wrath to come, come to Jesus as He freely invites them to come to Him and give them rest. In Jesus' name, Amen.